my MBBS and MS General Surgery from PJ Medical College in Dubai. I completed my surgery in 2016. Then I was in Junagadh. I was doing private practice. After two to three years of private practice, I went to Jaya's Hospital Anand. And then last uh, I was in uh, Delhi in Gangaram Hospital. I was doing fellowship in liver transplant and surgical gastroenterology. And for last eight months I am working here in Mehta's Hospital as a full time uh, general and gastro surgeon. So today's my topic is approach to the management of uh, lower gastrointestinal hemorrhage. So first of all, what is gastrointestinal hemorrhage? There are some terms like uh, up, upper and lower. So when it is above the duodenal jejunal flexor, it is called upper lower GI hemorrhage. And when it is below, it is also related to ligament of trees at the same location. Another term is obscure GI hemorrhage. So obscure term is used when the origin cannot be detected. And there are two more terms like over and over. Over means when the visible blood is pre present and open means it can only be detected by chemical test or microscopic examination. So stool open blood should be ordered only when we cannot see the blood. Sometimes we order stool open blood in each and every case. When PDPR is present, we order stool open blood. There is no need for that report. So we can see the blood and it is only for when it is detected by chemical test or microscopy examination. Now we will discuss some etiopathologies. Uh, first we will start from the what is the and day to day practice, anorectal disease, the two most common hemorrhoid and fissure. The many of the <coughs> basic difference between this uh, is that the hemorrhoid are painless and fissure there is a perianal pain. This is the main basic difference. Other difference is in the hemorrhoid, there will be uh, blood will be fresh and there will be spotter of the blood. Whereas in the fissure, there will be only side streaking of the stool. Also in fissure, there can be a blood of the toilet paper. This can cause intermittent rectal bleeding, but uh, over a time it leads to severe anemia. And when the patient are on anticoagulant or they have anything uh, like a thrombocytopenia any reason for any syndrome or when they are HIV infected, they may lead to massive bleeding. So, in this type of patient, when they have a thrombocytopenia or an anticoagulant or HIV infected, they should be treated early or they should be operated early as compared to other patients. Other causes like the inflammatory disease, there are many. Uh, ulcerative colitis is the main thing uh, among all these. Uh, ulcerative colitis has higher incidence of bleeding. Uh, it is associated with mucus and discharge and pain. Then Crohn's has lower incidence compared to ulcerative colitis, but still there. Then also radiation colitis, infectious and idiopathic ulcer. This whole inflammatory process leads to ulcer formation, and with this ulcer will ultimately leads to bleeding. Another is ischemic colitis. Ischemic colitis happens mostly in the elderly patient and they are associated with cardiac failure and arrhythmia. So again in a cardiac patient when this type of parietal bleeding happens, it can be due to this ischemic colitis also. And mostly involved area is this splenic flexor and retrosigmoid junction because they are called as the water side area. This area are between the two major arteries. So the blood supply to this area is less compared to the rest part of the colon. When there is a hypotension and vasoconstriction, so the, obviously the blood supply will decrease to this area. So this leads to mucosal friability, then colonic wall stuffing, edema and ultimately hemorrhage will occur. Another is colon carcinoma. So when there is a erosion in the mass or there is ulceration on the mass, it will lead to bleeding. Sometimes there are polyps are there and colonoscopic polypectomy was done, everything was great. But after procedure, there is also chances of uh, hemorrhage from the post polypectomy side because of the feeding pressure. Another thing is diverticulosis. Uh, this is more common in Western country compared to India. India is a lower incidence because in Western country, 
currently they have a low fiber diet. So they have more constipation and recurrent stain, which leads to repeated contraction and relaxation of muscularis propria, which ultimately leads to thinning of the media. So because of this, there is shape like protrusion from the point of weakness and at this point the vessel penetrates and perforates the circular muscle cord. So when this vessel ruptures, there is a bleeding. So due to any constipation or any reason, this vessel might rupture and leads to torrential bleeding. Another is angiodysplasia. This is nothing but a dilated blood vessel. This blood vessel dilates due to or uh, uh, also same reason constipation so this part is mostly located in the cecum and ascending colon and this is also disease of elderly people it is uh, mostly associated with some systemic disease uh, like atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease chronic kidney disease collagen disorder cirrhosis or pulmonary disease basically in this uh, <coughs> disorder there will be a uh, dilatation of this vessel so this chronic intermittent low grade colonic contraction is the option of the mucosal venous drainage so the capillary will progressively dilate and become incompetent and there is arteriovenous malformation but in this hemorrhage is less torrential compared to diabetic fluorosis because this hemorrhage is venous another is temporal ulcer and solitary rectal ulcer syndrome these are basically a traumatic ulcer so when uh, any ulcer in colon results due to any trauma, so this trauma can be due to a hard infected stool, foreign body or when due to any manipulation for any purpose, this lead to ulcer formation and these ulcer bleeds, they are called stercoral ulcer. So this cause mucosal damage ulcer, they are usually 5 cm from the dentate line. Now radiation induces. Uh, the radiation induces mucosal telangiectasia, so which is the dilatation of the vessel. This causes inflammatory changes and they are prone to bleeding. So when there is a prostate or uterine cancer and radiotherapy is used, it might have lead to bleeding. So the history is important for this also. Sometimes we miss this history, radiotherapy and we try to find the cause but we could not. So this history is also important. Then some commonly used drugs like aspirin, NSAID, antiplatelet, coagulant, corticosteroid. Usually, when usually a single will not cause any bleeding, but uh, when there is a, a pre-existing any condition, then these drugs can exaggerate the bleeding. Or when they are used in combination, like aspirin with NSAIDs or aspirin with uh, antiplatelet, coagulant, or corticosteroid, they can cause bleeding. And in children, uh, some common causes are colitis, polyps, and metal cerebrotipula. So these were the etiopathologies of the <coughs> bleeding in lower GI tract. Now, uh, some rare causes like uh, small bowel diverticulosis. The previously we discussed both the large, large bowel. Then colonic rectal varices or portal colopathy. This happens in portal hypertension when the systemic and portal uh, circulation will open up. Then diversion colopathy, developer lesion, intussusception, endometriosis, even uterine endometriosis can invade the rectum and cause rectal bleeding. So this type of uh, rare cause sometimes happens and we should also take history about this disease also. So the presentation of this bleeding varies from uh, streaking the side of the where from stool, only there will be a streak of the blood on the stool to the splattering of pine after the passage of hard stool. So first thing will happen in the fissure, then this will be in the uh, hemorrhoids. It might, it might have bloody diarrhea, maybe have mucus discharge, it happens in the ulcerative colitis, hairy black, black stool which is melena, then maroon stool, fresh blood. So this uh, different presentation may be there. <laughs> Sometimes the small, uh, sorry, when there is a bleeding from the small intestine, it will be very black, so it will be malena. But when there is bleeding from the right side of the uh, column, it will be maroon stool 
and when from the left side it will be bright red but this is not uh, necessary sometimes if there is massive bleeding from the upper gi blade then also it can present present as a hematopathy which is bright red color or sometimes sickle hemorrhage can also present as a terrible stool as we have seen that uh, right side is uh, like maroon stool but it's not necessary so the color basically gives a uh, some uh, basic idea but it is not necessary that uh, it, uh, just because of color we can diagnose the part it makes only some sickle hemorrhage will present as a terrible Uh, yes. I would have already is a tuberculosis. How? Uh, because sir, in tuberculosis, uh, there will be a uh, uh, sickle so will be pulled up, and there is a sore stricture will be there, and because of that, blood will stay there, and in that condition, the it actually hematic will form and it leads to blood damage. Other conditions. Yes. Huh? And then when you do the 
So to overcome this, the next investigation is the CT scan. Uh, in the CT scan, there is a triple phase or CT angiography is important. Plain CT is no role in this. So it will diagnose the bleeding by enhanced uh, by some features like the enhanced bowel wall, spontaneous hypertensity of the perigoal fat, extravasation of contrast into lumen, polyp or tumor. So this will describe the active bleeding. Or any vascular is present may also be seen here. The advantage of non-invasiveness speed. We can also repeat the CD if we need it for follow-up. We cannot repeat the colonoscopy uh, day every day. And also the uh, other advantage is small bowel lesion can also be identified. Sometimes uh, in some centers they use provocative mesenteric angiography. This is nothing but an induced hemorrhage. So when the bleeding is stopped, but it is a recurrent bleeding. So if we are investigating thing at the time when there is no bleeding, we will not find any cause. So, so in this, they will induce the hemorrhage by fibrinolytic agent like retaplase <coughs> and at the same time angiography will be done and uh, identify the source of the bleeding. Uh, Otherwise, 
in angiography we will cannot find the bleeding source so when the if there is major artery is embolized then there is risk of bowel ischemia there is also risk of cardiac arrhythmia due to vasopressin use along with the angiography and uh, the contrast use is uh, it, it can go be nephrotoxic so when the angiography can uh, cannot stop the bleeding or is not available or intervention radiologist are not available the uh, or in some centers periphery the only option remaining is the surgical surgical indication uh, are persistent hemodynamic instability with active bleeding or there is recurrent bleeding and this is the main thing we need to focus this is the four unit of uh, PCG is required in 24 hour and still the blood pressure is not maintaining maintaining then we need to go for surgical uh, surgical option even if we don't have any diagnosis then please to call another doctor okay. so this is high risk patient yeah something happens only you are responsible okay. this is a team
spherical resection remains the right option, uh, sorry, last option. And the uh, blind right epicolectomy is surgical option, and uh, no 